Welcome back to the First United Bank Center, the finale of the 2021 D2 CCA Tip-Off Classic, sponsored by Suddenlink, and aren't they proud to have us on board? It's your Magnum PI edition. I'm Tom Selleck. This is my sidekick, David Hasselhoff, <laughs> and we're here to bring you the number three ranked West Texas A&M Buffaloes versus the Damon Wildcats. This is a rematch of NCAA quarterfinal action in the Elite Eight last year. The Buffs showed their potential last night, defeating Colorado Mesa 87-65, excuse me, 72-63. They defeated MSU Moorhead 87-65 last night, led by as many as 35 at one point. Early in the second half, had 48 first half points. They entered the game at 2-0. Damon College comes in at 1-1. They defeated MSU Moorhead 67-63 and lost to Colorado Mesa 76-65. They return 11 winners and all five starters from last year's Elite Eight team. Here's how Damon College joins them up. They're in their eighth season under head coach Mike McDonald. Yeah, one guard, 6'3 graduate from Houston, Texas, Sean Fasiero. He averages 11.5 points, six rebounds. Second guard, Kyle Harris, 6'3 graduate student from Buffalo, New York. He averages 1.2.5 rebounds. The third guard, he's very active, Ryan Salzburg, 6'4 junior from Manlius, New York. Salzburg averages nine points, one rebound a game. Andrew Mason's the fourth guard, 6'3 sophomore from Webster, New York. Mason averages nine points, two and a half rebounds. And the center, the guy you got to watch out for, Andrew Sisko, 6'9 graduate student from Gilderland, New York. Sisko averages 12 and a half points, 11 rebounds. He is Damon College's all-time leading scorer and rebounder. He's also the leading rebounder in the East Coast Conference, and he is the current active leader in both scoring and rebounding in all of Division II. For the Buffaloes at 2-0, they'll start the five-guard lineup. At one guard, Julius Brown, 5'10", junior from Westerville, Ohio. Juju averages 18 points, two rebounds a game. Second guard, Kavon Booker, 6'6", sophomore from Schertz. Booker averages four points, six and a half rebounds. Third guard, he's the shooter, Zach Tucson, 5'11", sophomore from Johnsburg, Illinois. Tucson averaging 17 and a half points, two and a half rebounds. Hayden Blankley's a guard, 6'6", sophomore from Sydney, Australia. He averages two and a half points, seven and a half rebounds. And rounding out the starting five, Larry Wise, 6'4", sophomore from Waxahachie, a transfer from the University of North Texas, averaging 16 points, six and a half rebounds. He had 21 points last night against Colorado Mesa. Our officiating crew, Darren Griffin, Damon Thomas, and Ryan Snyder, and this should be a good one. It's NCAA Tourney Elite, a rematch from a year ago. Let's finish it off the right way. The Buffs the opportunity to start the season at 3-0. Damon College looking for the opportunity to go back to Buffalo, New York with a winning record in the first weekend. Damon comes out in the road blacks with Damon and the numerals in white outlined in royal blue. The Buffs in the home white with the maroon trim. West Texas across the chest. And Booker controls it to Tucson, who tips it back to Juju. Julius Brown, transfer from Lincoln Memorial. Cross court to Blankley. Here's Tucson on the block. Tries to feed Booker. And a little miscommunication there. Right idea. Two defenders had come over on Zach. And one thing I've noticed this season, Kent, Zach has gotten stronger. He gets in the paint there, double teamed. They don't take it away from him, still able to make that pass. But it's a turnover nonetheless. Here's Salzburg. Little touch pass to Mason. Harris lobs inside to Cisco. Booker goes over and takes it away. That athleticism right there from Kavon. Now, Kavon, not as big, brawny size as Cisco, but neither are very probably many. a little more <laughs> mobile. 
not many players will be against Cisco. Cisco is an old school post, and there's a nice hook by Hayden Blankley. Saw Hayden last night after the Buffs, or yesterday after the Buffs game, and the teammates were giving him a hard time about him not dunking that yeah. play that he had, but he said, I just want to make sure I got the layup. I remember Quay Grant last year going up for the dunk, and he missed it, and the Raz he took. Here's Cisco, backs in on Booker, double team now as Blankley comes over and he puts it off the glass and in. He has scored over 2,100 points in his career, grabbed over 1,200 rebounds, still has a year to go. Here's why he's up top, guarded by Harris. A three put up and missed by Booker, but Blankley with the rebound loses it. Yeah, it took a bounce there. He should have just kept it high. Quick hands by Damon. The Wildcats down court quick. Three launched by Mason. No good. Rebound comes down to the buffs. Brown pulls up. Step back three. Little too strong. 3rd Third game in as many days for both of these teams as it's been for everyone in this tournament. Pump fake by Mason, drives on Blankley, puts up an off-balance shot, gets the roll mm. and one. Mason had 10 points in last night's loss to MSU Moorhead. Yeah, Blankley was just out of position on the drive. And that's an incredible finish because yeah. he's he was off balance. way off balance. Those are those shots we used to see David Chavlovic make. 50%er from the line. He misfires. The Wildcats lead the buffs 4-2. to Brown kicks outside to Addison Wallace. Transfer from Texas State who slips down, loses the ball, out of bounds. It's going to be the Buffs basketball. Yeah, Addison had a good game yesterday for WT. Nine, nine points. Yeah, nine points. He also had four assists. He's a smooth player. Buffs have so many interchangeable parts on their roster. Wallace outside. He'll handle the ball right now. Goes baseline underneath. Reverse. Goes right mm. around Cisco. Mm, the stop and go. The and athleticism. And we're tied at four. Damon College out of the East Coast Conference gets it to Cisco underneath. Nice feed by Kyle Harris. It's fourth point for the big guy. How many games in a row, Kent, did you text me last night and say Cisco had gone? It's like 69 before in double figures. And there's a dunk underneath by Booker. And one. Foul's going to go on Cisco. Now, that's a story from last night. Okay. Andrew Cisco held to nine points and seven rebounds. Limited action because he picked up three fouls early on. Yes. And it was a good defensive job last night. Booker converts. In that win by uh, Colorado Mesa. They held Damon to just 65 points. Damon in their first two games score 67 and 65. And that's about where they'll try and keep things. Good double team. Double team. Blankley Booker. Cisco splits them and gets the lay in. He works hard. S yeah, Cisco's determined. I mean, he's going to want to come out today and score 30 or more. Oh, Brown has it blocked, gets his own rebound, taps it to Wallace. It's good defense by Kyle Harris. He is very athletic, along with number two, Fasiero. Blankley to Bell on the wing. Back on top to Hayden. Here's Booker. He's taking it to Cisco off the glass. Won't go in. You know, Cisco Kent does a good job. He doesn't really swat at the ball. He just puts his yeah. arm straight up. So kevon has got to be patient there and still get a good release on his shot. Well, at 6'9", he's got a lot of elevation when he raises his arms. There's a three from outside. Misses everything. Sean Passiero, Houston native. By way of Ontario, Canada, we've got a timeout on the floor, 1547. To play in the first... Damon College on top, 8-7. You're watching the D2 CCA Tip-Off Classic, sponsored by Sudden Link. We gotta hurry. Here we go. Welcome to Metadrive Pharmacy. 
Canyon's hometown pharmacy for over 32 years. We greet you by name, and our pharmacists take the time to counsel you and answer all your questions. Our Health Mart Pharmacy specializes in serving our community with fast, friendly, professional service and the highest quality medicines and health products. We accept most insurance plans, including Medicaid and Medicare, and we offer free in-town delivery to your home or business. Come visit us for all your health care needs. This is what a new heart valve looks like. This is what a bypassed artery looks like. And this is what a repaired aortic aneurysm looks like. The BSA Heart and Vascular Team is here to help you live life to the fullest. From our state-of-the-art cardiac technologies to our dedicated heart specialists, our goal is to help you take the very best care of your heart so you can enjoy everything else that matters to you. BSA for life. Welcome back to the First United Bank Center. 8-7 the score. Damon College off to a good start and largely in part to the inside presence of Andrew Sisko. Six points, perfect three for three from the field. And Damon is shooting 67% from the field right now. They'll go with a little extended zone here. Blankley finds Jesse Zui in the corner. There's Addison Wallace with the short jumper. Jesse Oweezy on the floor, yeah, freshman he, from Roanoke. And the fans already love him, Kent. Well, some strong dunks yesterday is one way to ingratiate yourself with your fan base. Here's Harris, finds Cisco on the block, double teamed outside now. Kyle Harris for yep. three, no. Oweezy with the rebound. And that's the exact game plan that the Buffs are going to go with. The ball goes into Cisco. There's going to be an immediate double team. You're going to live with some of those shots taken. Cameron Bell, a little strong on his mid-range jumper. Kyle Harris with the rebound. Quickly up court. Fasciero. Wildcats working it around the perimeter. This is Ryan Salzburg off to Fasciero for okay. three. That's what Damon did not get a lot of last night was the three-point production. But they can't shoot it. Wildcats up two at 11-9. Here's Blankley. He'll put up a three, a little strong. Iweezy with the rebound. Goes under Cisco for the lay-in. Man. The effort, the athleticism. And, you know, here he is in his third game as a college player. You're going to draw the assignment of a Division II All-American, two-time All-American. And, and you school him on offense. <laughs> oh, easy. He's like, okay, let's go. Let's. All right, picture him last year at Waxahachie High. Who's guarding him? I wouldn't want to. Yeah. Kyle Harris on the wing, guarded by Brown. Goes to Salzburg. Quick three, and yeah. it's in. That's the danger with this Damon team. That They made a lot of those last season. They can get going from the perimeter. Salzburg has scored nine in each of the two previous Wildcat games. Addison Wallace, he'll put up a three, a little strong, but there's Blankley with the rebound. Mm. The putback won't go. The Wildcats come away with the ball. That was great hustle by Hayden, just couldn't convert. Harris, quick three, in and out. Juju has it. They're going to run. Blankley ahead in the corner to Bell. Here's Blankley for three off the mark. Addison Wallace tries to corral it. Can't catch up with it. We've got a lot of subs coming in for, uh, for West Texas A&M. Four players will check in. One of those, Kent, will be Dalen Williams, who we felt like gave great production yesterday. He's going to be that guy that's going to come in and bang and get rebounds and defend, block shots. Entering the game for Damon College, Nick McDonald. He's the son of Coach Mike McDonald. Spent the previous two years playing at D1 Niagara University. He comes off the bench for his dad's team. Here's Fasciero drives. Ooh. Oh, they're calling the block. And one for Fasciero. Thought Damon William, uh, Dalen Williams. Established position, but he must have still been moving. They we'll get see David. it on the replay. Yeah. Oh, brother. <laughs> was, he, was he in the arc or out of the arc? 
Tom Brown says, tell me why. First foul on Dalen and the second on the Buffs. At the line, shooting for the wild It's an old Reba McIntyre song, KJ. Tell me why. <laughs> Fassiero gets it. An old-fashioned three-point play. He has six, and the Wildcats up five. Oh, hard screen Boy, there. Fassiero runs right through Dalen Williams. No foul. Two strong players. He was open in the paint. Cisco's out right now. The Buffs, see if yeah. they can take advantage of that because you got the size. Yeah, Ryan Bradley is the big guy inside. There's a three. Two. Oh, Two-pointer for Julius. That's that step-back shot yeah. that we saw him make about five of those yesterday. When Cisco exits, exits the game, Ryan Bradley comes in. They don't lose much. He's 6'7". And he it's scores. a nice reverse there, yeah. Wow. He's more mobile than Cisco, but he doesn't have the, the physical stature. There's Juju for three. Mm -hmm. Five points Julius on the last Brown. two possessions for Julius. 18-16, Damon College. Located on the north side of Buffalo, and they tell me when Buffalo gets all the snow you see at the Bills games, a lot of times they're high and dry. Yeah. The snow goes on the south. There's a walk as Fasiero took a step trying a jump stop. We'll get our snow here in March and April, right? <laughs> Could get it tomorrow, too. 11.34 to play in the first. Here you'll see Fasiero on the break. He took two steps and never put the ball on the floor. 11.34 to play in the first. Buffs trail two. You're watching the D2 CCA Tip-Off Classic, sponsored by Suddenly. joints begin to fail it's more than an inconvenience the relentless grinding pain slows you down and can even stop you from doing the things you enjoy in life at physician surgical hospitals our skilled orthopedic experts are using advanced robotic surgeries to get you back to being you sooner with a less painful recovery we're doing more than restoring joints we're restoring lives All right, 1860. They're playing some great music here at the First United Bank Center. It's Halloween, and we're having fun right now. It's a great game. Damon leading West Texas A&M 1816. Hot shooting from the Wildcats to start this half. Got a great basketball game. Two great teams. Julius Brown hooks oh. it up and Booker oh, with the off. follow. It's a holiday. People are dressed oh. up. What is not to like about Sunday, October 31st? Cisco back on the floor along with Bradley. So Damon throwing both of their two big players on the floor. Salzburg distributes back intended for Atkins. Ball loose, and we're going to have a kicked ball. So WT basketball. It was booted by Joey Atkins, 6'5", junior from Watervliet, New York. I mentioned... Nick McDonald comes off the bench. He he calls his dad, says, I want to transfer. And his dad said, fine, talk to my assistants who handle that. Ooh, Julius blocked. Quick outlet to Salzburg. Salzburg spins. And we got a jump ball. It'll be Damon College's ball. So he calls the staff. They say, Nick, we'd love to have you, but you know we've got 12 lettermen and five starters back. You're not going to start. And he said, well, I just want a different role. So here he is. He comes off the bench. Wow. Huh. He averages 13 points a game. He had 17 last night. That's quite an offensive spurt it to is. come off the bench. And an unselfish young man. Here's a three by Bradley. No good. Nice block out by Booker as the, the rebound came right to him. Yeah, Kavon's playing some good basketball here tonight. Tied at 18. Booker up top. Thought about it. He already has a three. Cameron Bell to Wise. Wise drives baseline, pulls up from 12 mm. and pops mm. the net. Really like Larry Wise's game. He's a smooth player. It's his first bucket here today. 
He, as you said, he's averaging 16, though, in first two games in a Buffalo uniform. Played very sparingly at North Texas. He's in the starting lineup here and glad for it. Almost a walk. Instead, it's a turnover. McDonald loses it to Bell. Cameron takes it in. Can't get oh. it, but there's Booker again. Got it again. With the follow. Again, Kavon Booker. He is muscling it up tonight. He is showing off here on Halloween. Averaging six and a half rebounds in the first two games, but hasn't really scored that much. He's got seven so far. Here's a three missed by McDonald. Rebound to Brown. It's a 9-0 run by the Buffs. Better turn around, friends. Here he comes. Booker to Brown. Here's the step back. Nope. Goes to Wise. Guarded by McDonald. Wise in the paint. Finger roll. No. Williams keeps it alive. Yep. Comes up with the basketball. Buffs get a fresh 20. Booker Spins it up, no good. Is that Williams? It is. It is. <laughs> oh, he got tomahawk. That's what the Atlanta Braves tomahawk. And they're calling chop. a jump ball. Get up. Oh, that was a tomahawk chop. <laughs> Aggressive. It's play. physical inside, but yeah, the Buffs have someone that can play that game. Tell me, this isn't the tomahawk chop right here. And right. Boom. <laughs> Tell You're, me, you don't have body on that. Well, the Buffs still have the ball. They get the inbound throw. Speaking of that, and the Braves, a fresh twenty. The Braves play the game five tonight, yeah. and the young Can man clinch. starting that pitcher is from Tascosa High School out of Amarillo. Very wise with the turnaround. No, but Iwizi keeps it alive. Finds Wise outside to Brown. Here's the three. Got it. The hustle, the extra effort, and you get three points out of it. 7-0 run for the Buffs. We were tied at 18. 12 and now it's up to 12, yes. Cisco blocked by a Wheezy. Yeah, I see you out there, young man. <laughs> young man from Roanoke, Texas, doing work. Yes, sir. Don't think Cisco was expecting that. No. He's going to want it back, though. Oh, yeah. Payback time. Going to get Tucson with a bump. Yeah, and I, it looked like you could have gone the other way with Mason on the on the hook, but they got Zach with the hold. You know, to this point, there have not been many fouls in this game, four total, for as much activity as we've had. On the floor for Damon, it'll be Justin Johnson, sophomore guard out of Buffalo. Inbounds in front of the Buffs bench. They get it into Johnston. Quick Ball hands. knocked out of bounds. Quick hands there from Julius. It's still two years with this young man, Kent. He's just a junior. It's going to be a lot of fun watching him play. There's McDonald on the wing. To Cisco. Shot clock at four. Fade away. Look at that. Yeah. Man. That, that, that's a Dirk Nowitzki type yep. shot there. You know, he recognizes, okay, I'm, I'm not going to go down in the paint because Aweezy's really muscling up on me, so he'll take that fadeaway jump shot. That's impressive. Now yeah, you watch those two push down under the uh, Buffalo's basket. Here's Wallace, drives in, off the glass and in. Yep, that was all Good acceleration. <laughs> Buffs up seven at 27-20. 14-2 run for the Buffs over the last 4.30. Fasiero in the corner to Johnson. They give it to Cisco in the paint. Backs into a wheezy, and he takes the charge. Here it is again. Just incredible yeah. defense. Yeah. Got the shoulder down. We've got a timeout on the floor, 7.06 to play in the first. Buffs on a roll, leading 27-20. You're watching the D2 CCA Tip-Off Classic, sponsored by Suddenlink. 
80 years, the Lone Star Conference has been committed to excellence. What began in 1931 as a five-team conference has grown to 18 institutions spanning four states. And while membership has changed, the pursuit of athletic success and academic excellence has never wavered. 119 national championships, over 2,000 All-Americans, and nearly 300 academic All-Americans. Celebrating many years of success, this is the Lone Star Conference. WT student athletes drink low-fat chocolate milk post-workout because it helps replenish and restore muscles quickly to their peak potential. Scientific studies suggest that the immediate benefits of low-fat chocolate milk include boosted performance, improved training, and higher recovery rates in athletes. Add low-fat chocolate milk to your post-workout routine. Our score, 27 to 20. And a tight game here at the First United Bank Center, day three of the D2 CCA tip-off classic, brought to you by Suddenly, Lucas Kinsey, alongside Kent Johnson, and our director, Jacob Johnson. We're glad to have you with us. Happy Halloween to everybody. Larry Wise brings the ball up court for the Buffs. Gives it to Tucson, scoreless in the first 14 minutes. Here's Brown, tries to drive, step back from 12, nothing but net. How do you guard it when the, mm. when the guy starts to jump and then all of a sudden he shoots it from three feet further back? Here's Fasiero to Mason. Over in the corner, Nick McDonald for Ooh. three. Yeah, he shot that over two defenders. Yep. Drano. 29-20, Buffs. Larry Wise tries to get one back. Yeah, doesn't go. Oh. And then we're going to get Kavon over the back. That's a silly one there. That's going to be his first. Kavon Hunter was the one. Kevon has been able to stay on the floor, though, today. He did not do that yeah. yesterday. Got in early foul trouble. Buffs by six, 29-23, six to play, first half. McDonald guarded by Wallace. Kicks it back to Hemphill, to Fasciero. Three, left wing, in and out. No, Wallace with the rebound. Here come the Buffs. Right side, Tucson for three, yes. He's not going to be scoreless for long. And he didn't have any space on that one. He just caught that oh, ball and man. shot. Shot that one from across campus. 32-23 buffs. Here's Fasciero. Gets around wise and Larry bumps him. You know, Kent, I was talking to the Tucson family uh, after the game uh, yesterday, and we've been talking about the trading cards, right, with uh, Sidel Threet and his son playing for Colorado Mesa. And so they tell me, well, last year after Zach hit that shot to send the Buffs to the national championship game, somebody in the family or a family friend created a basketball trading card of Zach hitting the game-winning shot and said, they're going to send us one of those. So. That's a special card That's right cool. there. That's yeah. cool. That's cool. You know, trading cards are pretty expensive nowadays. They used to <laughs> used to get a box for a decent price, and now it's like $6 for a pack. <laughs> now I sound like I'm getting old. No, that's all right. Maybe it's the wig. Got a whistle over in the corner. And they've got Who's this one on. This may go against <laughs> Andrew Mason. Yeah, we yeah, was 15. being held as he was trying to establish post position. Good job on the replay there. Mike McDonald doesn't like it. Ball comes in to Booker. Tucson outside, guarded by Salzburg. They get the big guy out there. That should leave it open underneath. Kavon dribbles it off his foot. Mm -hmm. And then Zach kicks it around, and Cameron Bell gets it. Oh, easy. Finger roll and gets the charge. Oh. 
The Standing only, his ground was Andrew Mason. Yeah, the only question on this is how deep yeah. is the defender there because it looked like Jesse really was right close to the basket. So that one's tough. Tom Brown disagreeing with the yeah, call. Yeah, he says let's look at where the yeah. defender is standing. Still a nine-point lead for WT. Nearing the four-minute mark, 445. To How play do you not have half. a kicked ball whistle in, in all yeah. that little skirmish? You had about three opportunities for either side. Damian passes around the perimeter. Three from McDonald. Short. Ewezy with the rebound. Brown brings the buffs up court. Drives the lane. Goes over in the corner. Cameron Bell puts up a three. No good. Fight for the rebound Aweezy. between Bradley and Aweezy, and the freshman gets a quick second foul. And it's bonus time now for the Wildcats. They're going to be shooting some free throws. There's still a lot of time left in the half. Here's a replay on it. Thought Bell had a good look, and that time a foul as for Damon. Ryan Bradley had good position on the block out. Bradley averaging two points and three rebounds. At the line, shooting Damon Wildcats. One in the bonus, Ryan Bradley. Bradley's shot, up and good. He'll get another one. Damon College out of Buffalo, New York. We said that yesterday. Go Bills. Go Bills. It's the fan base that they jump off the tables or jump onto the tables, right? <laughs> you know, it's like you jump on tables for some teams, you burn couches for others. Here's Julius Brown. Pull up from the baseline short. Oh. Williams keeps it alive, but the Buffs can't control it. Here's Salzburg shot. May have been altered slightly by Dalen Williams. Buffs get the rebound, leading by seven. An uncharacteristic. WT has three turnovers in the last 150. Here's Booker. Puts up a three. No good. Yeah, he, you know, he's tried to improve his outside shooting, but that's not his specialty. He does have six points thus far. Mm -hmm. Not all dunks. Ryan Salzburg, junior from Manlius, New York. To Fasiero. Drives in. It's going to be blocked by Williams, controlled by Bell. That's what I'm talking about with number 12, making the hustle plays. Julius Brown with the finger rolling. He missed it and yeah. he knew it. You don't get those no. easy bunnies too often. He, he just didn't have the angle. Timeout with 309. What's this block? Dalen Williams. Yeah. Tom Brown gives Julius a smile like, I can't believe that. 309 to play in the first. Buffs up seven. You're watching the D2 CCA Tip Off Classic, sponsored by Sudden Link. Choosing the right countertops for your kitchen can be tricky. Nowadays, there are hundreds of colors, patterns, and textures and materials that range from natural to engineered stone. Marble Depot is here for you throughout every step of the process. And yes, we do have a lot of options that might make that decision a little harder, but we're also going to ask the right questions so that you get the most out of your investment. So come by our showroom and let us help create what you've been dreaming of. 3.09 to play in the first. Buffs lead at 32-25. Damon College, 10 of 21, 47% from the field. 2 of 11 from outside. The Buffs, 14 of 34, 41% from the field. They're 1 of 1 from the line. Buffs, get this, Lucas. Buffs out-rebounding the Wildcats, 22 to 10. Wow. 11 rebounds on each end. With all that size. 
Yeah. And I say that, WT, ha- it can't, WT is bigger than we have been in several seasons. Yeah, we've got bodies now. We used to be slender and athletic. Now we're athletic and strong. Look at this lineup on the floor right now. Williams and Booker, both big. Wise and Wallace at the bigger. guard positions, bigger. And, you know, we used to talk about Quay Grant's stature and yeah. size, but, but Julius is just chiseled. Here's a inlet pass to Cisco. Turnaround from eight. Mm. Man, and he put it in there. And he may have been hit on the arm. That was an impressive shot by Cisco. Ten points for the big guy. Buffs with eight points off turnovers, none for Damon College at this point. Everything else pretty even. Buffs had a 12-point scoring run at the eight-minute mark. Here's Wallace. Got it! Smooth shot. Eight points for Addison. Cleburne Yellow Jacket. Texas State Bobcat and now a West Texas State A&M Buffalo. Cisco to Salzburg. Cross court to Harris. In the corner to Bradley. Bradley gets around Booker and Booker fouls him. And for Kavon, that's going to be his second. Team foul number eight against the Buffs. And that'll send... Ryan Bradley to the line. He has three points. Opportunity to pick up two more as he makes the first. Payton Blankley in for Kavon Booker. Blankley back on the floor replacing Booker. One shot. Bradley makes them both. Five-point game at 34-29. Blankley outside, three, too strong. Wallace keeps it alive to Wise, pump fake. Larry goes up, and he's fouled. And how high, Kent, did Addison Wallace go on this one to keep this ball alive? Look at this. Justin That's Gisdell. taking the elevator all hop. the way to the top. Got some hop. Larry's first shot's good. Miss the second. Bradley gets the rebound for the Wildcats. Approaching a minute and a half to play here in the first half. Buffs lead 35-29. Justin Hemphill tries to dribble drive. He's cut off, so they go the other side to Harris. Harris working on Wallace. A little step back from 15. No. Blankley keeps the ball alive. Brown comes up with it. Julius on the wing, get kicks it outside to Tucson. trying to defend him, Ken. <laughs> Those crossover dribbles. Here's Wallace. Looks for Blankley. Decides to put up the three instead. Yeah, the last two days. How are, about 11 points? We are seeing Addison Wallace, Kent, what he is capable of offensively, and it is impressive. Nick McDon- Mike McDonald wants a timeout. We'll take it with him. Too much space, right? Well, he wants to pass it to Hayden here, and he says, okay, if you're going to give me the shot, I'll take it. We'll call it 38-29 with 54 seconds to play in the first. You're watching the D2CCA Tip-Off Classic, sponsored by Sudden Link. Joints begin to fail. It's more than an inconvenience. The relentless grinding pain slows you down and can even stop you from doing the things you enjoy in life. At Physician Surgical Hospitals, our skilled orthopedic experts are using advanced robotic surgeries to get you back to being you sooner with a less painful recovery. We're doing more than restoring joints. We're restoring lives. A smile is understood in any language. It represents joy, love, and shows you care. At Full Smile Dental, 
Welcome back to the First United Bank Center Buffs on another little run here. And WT leading 38-29. to Great play in the first half from two of the new players for WT. Addison Wallace, 11 points on five of six from the field. And Julius Brown, Juju, 10 points, five rebounds. Coming up at the half, Lucas will visit with Lady Buff head coach Josh Prock, who picked up his first victory with West Texas today as his Lady Buffs defeated Southwestern Oklahoma State 81-68. And there's a turnover. The Wildcat into the floor. 30 seconds to play. Buffs up nine. It has been a very happy Halloween here today, Kent. Tom, Tom Brown's going to take a timeout. Let's see if it's a 30 or a full. Looks like a 30. They're going to get around. Let's just keep it right yeah. here. I mean, what an exciting day. We've got a great basketball game here, as you say, watching Addison Wallace and the Buffs go at it. The game that we had just prior to this, the Lady Buffs getting their first win of the season over southwestern Oklahoma and the tournament in general, but today has just been a highlight. It has been. And well, we've got a little break here. Kent will announce uh, the all-tournament team on the women's side was announced uh, as they wrapped up play. Congratulations to Zamri Roberts and Olivia Lewis of West Texas A&M, both named the all-tournament team. From southwestern Oklahoma State, Nakira Tramble, Lauren Ramey, congratulations. Central Missouri, Nyjah Collier, Brooke, Brooke Littrell, and Olivia Nelson, the talented point guard. And then for Drury, Kaylee Demitz, Elena Finley, and the MVP of this tournament goes to Paige Robinson. Every every one of those players outstanding, and it was a, it was a treat to watch. You put them all on the floor at the same time. Yeah, that's a pretty good team. You got ten players, put them on each side. That'd be a heck of a game. And that would be two. All right, Buffs appear to play for one. Brown on the right wing, eight on the shot clock, gets it to Wallace. He's had the hot hand. He's going to drive in, turn around from 15, rolls out no good. Cisco with the rebound. Uh -oh. Quick outlet to Bradley, who loses control, still loose, and that's going to be the end of our first half of play. The teams will go to the locker room with the Buffs up nine, 38 to 29. Exciting first half of action. We've got more to go. Here you see the scrum for the ball. Fight till the horn, Kent. That's it. 38 29, our score. You're watching the D2 CCA Tip Off Classic, sponsored by Sudden Link. walk-on athlete. They train long. They put their heart into the game. This is the passion we're built on. It's why we put our heart into creating game day. For the taste of Louisiana. Walk-ons. We live for this. Welcome back to the First United Bank Center. Lucas Kinsey alongside Lady Buff head coach Josh Prock. We'll talk Lady Buff hoops uh, here with him at halftime of the men's game. Score 38-29, West Texas A&M leading Damon College. And uh, Josh Prock, congratulations on a big victory uh, today. We just saw the Lady Buffs uh, in the previous game defeat Southwestern Oklahoma State 81-68. to Your first uh, victory here of many uh, as a West Texas A&M Lady Buff coach. Your thoughts on uh, a, a hard-earned victory against what we said on the broadcast a lot. This is a very talented Bulldog team that you defeated today. Yeah, a very good Bulldog team. And, I mean, I, I have as much respect for Coach Music and Coach Anderson as I do with anybody in the country. I mean, they do a fantastic job. I mean, they, you know, they, was a, they were a couple points away from last year. Yes. From making the Elite Eight. Had I a little bit Christian on the ropes. They did. And so and they have all five starters back. So we knew this was going to be an extremely difficult weekend. You know, you don't know how it's going to turn out, this or that. But to go one and two, though? Yeah. I mean, when you think about it, Lucas, jury went 3-0. You know, yes. so, so congratulations to them for sure. But everybody else went one and two. Yeah. I mean, that just tells you how competitive it was. Yeah, all four teams yeah. that were here. Yeah. What, what was the, the biggest difference today, Josh? I mean, there were lots of different things. Your defense was good. The offense was better. Obviously, you got more balance. But what did you feel like, okay, we did these things better, and this is why we won? I think we just played with more confidence today. I just offensively, we looked more confident, you know, especially in that second half. You know, you saw where, you know, Haley got going a little yeah, bit. Yeah, Haley you know? Jansen. Yeah, and even though Taylor missed some shots defensively, she was a bother. And I look, huge shout out to Carly. 
Carly, Carly did it. Yeah, she may did as good a job on Micaiah Tramble mm-hmm. as anybody in the country will do. I mean, she did. And, and look, they did exactly like, you know, with Scout Report, we saw where they when they drive, they love to spin back, right? Mm-hmm. We knew that. We saw that. And our girls did a great job of jumping to that side, taking that away, taking away what they like to do. So we, we took away the, what they, you know, what they wanted to do, and I just I was proud of that defense. Yeah. Being a defensive-minded coach, I appreciate that. You held the Bulldogs to 68 points. This is a team that likes to score in the 80s and 90s. Yeah. No, we did a great job with that. I mean, there's not – I got told our ladies after the game, there's not going to be a lot of teams that are going to do that today. Yeah. Let's talk about the play of Jayla Burgess. I visited with uh, the yeah. young lady from Tulsa, Oklahoma, and actually when she came up here, she kind of gave me a look like, I'm really going inter- to do an interview with this guy with, uh, with looking <laughs> like this. But, no, we love, we love Jayla. And uh, she had a little bit of a coming-out party today, if you will, 14 points, six rebounds, a couple of assists and she looked smooth. She looked like the player that you've been talking about, the player that I saw last year in flashes. Yeah, yeah I mean, we just we tried to tell Jayla to be more aggressive. Like, you know, I was just teasing with her before the game. I said, Jayla, I want you to be a honey badger. There I you said, go. honey badger is one of the most fearless animals ever. So, you know, she took on that mentality a little bit today. So I'm, I was proud of her for sure. Uh, in the, the, the all tournament team was announced, and he had two players: Zamri Roberts and Olivia Lewis. Olivia back to back days of double doubles, and then Zam Roberts. I mean, today three of four from the three point line, so efficient. She was ten of fifteen from the field. Talk about those two young ladies and what they did in their first three games playing as uh, West Texas A&M Lady Buffs. Yeah, I was I'm very proud of them, and honestly, the the comfortability. I guess that's a word that you uh-huh. use with them. I mean, they obviously played for me at Eastern, so. They know where their shots are going to come from. They know the defensive schemes, what we like to do. So their success early on, you know, I'm, I'm not surprised by it just because I know what they're capable of. But they've had a tremendous, I mean, Zam's first three games. And you got to remember, this is a young lady that hadn't played in almost two years. So for her to come out and average whatever on the season, 22, 23 points, whatever she's yeah. averaging, shooting probably close to almost 40, 50% from the three-point line, it's just been phenomenal. Four steals, five rebounds, so she did some good things there as well. All right, so if you go one and two this weekend, and you've mentioned that you're going to continue uh, the tough schedule yeah. and, and play a team called the Baylor Bears. <laughs> um, and so you're going to take on Baylor, but for your team, how much did this win mean today? And then going forward, what do you continue to work on? Oh, it was huge. I mean, you know, now you know, you're know you coming off uh, going into your next two weeks of preparation off a win. Yes. And that's so much better to, to – Walking a little taller. Walking a little taller, you know, feeling better about yourself seeing things better. I mean, I told the ladies, too, playing Baylor, it's all about improvement. Mm-hmm. Let's, let's let's continue to get better in the areas that we need to get because, I mean, obviously Baylor is what they are. I mean, everybody knows about their program. So we got to get better because we got a really tough uh, couple teams coming here in a couple weeks with South Dakota School of Mines and Colorado Mesa. Yeah, well, it was a lot of fun today. Congratulations and happy Halloween, buddy. Way to get Appreciate the win. Appreciate it. And if you, honestly, like for the fans to know, if you really wanted to, I mean, you wanted to win all the games, but if you say you had to get one, yeah. This was a region win. Oh, yeah. This was a region win. So that's so, so down the road, NCAA yeah. tournament-wise, it's going to be a good one. It's a big one, yep. Okay, the Lady Buffs got the win 81-68. to We'll take a timeout. We'll come back, and we'll talk about the first half of the WT men's game as the Buffs trying to stay undefeated, and they lead Damon right now 38-29. to We're back with more basketball after this. The best tailgates start with the best beef. And the best beef starts with Market Street. Market Street, where we do beef the best. Welcome to Shimon Dental Group, where every day we're excited to see our patients and treat them like family. We are dedicated to providing you with the highest quality care in a friendly and comfortable environment. Shimon Dental Group's patient-focused philosophy puts your needs front and center. We are constantly investing in leading-edge technology. Innovations that speed the treatment process and improve aesthetics. We're expanding the breadth of our cosmetic and restorative services through training to provide the best possible outcomes. Just with the level of commitment that they show to taking care of my family and I, it's absolutely unmatched in this town, so I've been very happy with them. Brightening smiles for more than three decades. Contact Shim and Dillon Group for your appointment today.
The best tailgates start with the best beef. And the best beef starts with Market Street. Market Street, where we do beef the best. Welcome to Shimon Dental Group, where every day we're excited to see our patients and treat them like family. We are dedicated to providing you with the highest quality care. Welcome back to Canyon, Texas, First United Bank Center on the campus of West Texas A&M University. There you see our halftime score with West Texas A&M leading Damon College 38-29. to Here's a look at our first half team stats. Damon College hitting 45% from the field, 11 of 24. Outside there, 2 of 11, that's 18%. Haven't been to the line very much because there have not been many fouls called in this game. They are 5 of 6 for 83%. They've committed 7 turnovers. For West Texas, 16 of 38 from the floor, 42%. They've put up 14 three-pointers. Four of them have fallen, 28%. And they are 2 of 3 from the line, 66%. For as physical as this game is, it's being called like an NCAA postseason contest in that there are not a lot of free throws to this point. Buffs, though, holding a decisive rebounding advantage, 24 to 13, and they're fairly evenly distributed. 11 offensive, 13 defensive. The Wildcats, 13 rebounds, of which 12 are on the defensive, and the Buffs have committed just five turnovers. Buffs have committed... Five turnovers, but Damon College has not scored off of them. WT has scored eight points off of the seven Damon turnovers. Points in the paint, well, surprisingly, it's even. In fact, the Buffs have 14 points in the paint to two for, or excuse me, 12 for Damon College. Second chance points. This is where those offensive rebounds show. Ten second chance points for the Buffs, two for Damon College. Buffs bench outscoring the Wildcats 13-9, and the Buffs have led for 11-54 of the first half. We're going to take another timeout. When we come back, we'll have the second half of play. You're watching Buffalo Basketball and the D2 CCA Tip-Off Classic, sponsored by Suddenlink. This is a walk-on athlete. They train long, put their heart into the game. This is the passion we're built on. It's why we put our heart into creating game day. For the taste of Louisiana. Walk on. We live for this. Bud Light, proudly brewed. When you choose natural gas, chocolate chip cookies get a little tastier. Homes get a little cozier. Bank accounts tend to put on some weight. Towels get fluffier. Showers stay hotter for longer. And our blue planet gets a little greener. When it comes to choosing energy that's clean and efficient, nothing else could be more American. Atmos Energy, your natural gas company. Welcome back to the First United Bank Center. Having some fun here on Halloween, and we hope you have enjoyed the broadcast throughout the weekend. We appreciate everyone watching it on the Lone Star Conference Digital Network. The D2 CCA Tip-Off Classic brought to you by Suddenlink and Kent. 
It's 38-29 at halftime right now, WT with the lead. But Damon College, they're a veteran team. They've got a great coach. You know they're going to come back with some adjustments. And they've got to find a way to continue to get the ball, obviously, inside to Cisco. If the double team comes, they've got the shooters. Defensively, what adjustments can they make to try to slow the Buffaloes down? Well, that's that's going to be the issue. That the Buffs are the more athletic team. We've seen them cover Cisco, yeah. not with physicality, but with athleticism. And interesting, you, you stepped away when we did the stats. The Buffs are outscoring the Wildcats in the paint. Which is a surprise. Which is a surprise. Now, Cisco's going to get his points. you got to limit the points that come from the other players. They're a scrappy team. They don't give up. At some point, you got to think the Buffs are going to try and increase the tempo. It's had some up and down flow, but nothing like we saw yesterday in the win over MSU Moorhead. And I think that's what Tom Brown would like to see his team get. But credit Damon. They have done a good job of controlling the tempo. Yeah, just three fast break points for WT, just two fast break points for Damon College. Individually, obviously, Cisco with the 10 points. Good balance again, though, for a second straight day for West Texas A&M. Addison Wallace with 11 points. Julius Brown with 10. And Kevon Booker, Kent, let's give him his due. He's having a really good game as well. Seven points, four rebounds for Kevon Booker, and he's making an impact in the paint defensively. Absolutely. You talk about the defense. Buffs out rebounding the Wildcats by a large margin, yep. 24 to 13. But 11 of those 24 on the offensive end, they've been converted into 10 second chance points. Yep. Damon College isn't getting those rebounds and those second chance points. The Buffs relentless on the boards. They have to keep that up, or that's going to give Damon College the upper hand. I have to guess, Kent, as we're here on camera, that a broadcaster that would be proud of the way that we dress today would be Bill Walton, right? <laughs> I mean, this is a regular look yeah, right here Yeah, this is the Bill. look. You know, I think I've got longer pants on, and I've got – You're wearing shoes. I've got shoes and all that stuff. I'm not out feeding pandas in the backyard. <laughs> I, may, I may keep the – Yeah, you know, I was going to say the hair might people stay. People don't know if it's a costume or if I'm wearing a toupee now. We're ready for – Anyway, this is fun. Yeah, we're ready for some second-half action here at West Texas A&M and Damon College. To recap, earlier today, it started with Central Missouri uh, dropping one to Drury. Drury won 84-81 in the second game. MSU Moorhead on the men's side defeated Colorado Mesa 81-71. Third game saw the Lady Buffs of West Texas A&M defeat Southwestern Oklahoma State 81-68. And we'll see how this one turns out. The referee, DeMond Thomas, has the ball at midcourt awaiting the team's arrival. With the first possession. WT will have the basketball. Buffs next appearance at home will be in two weeks when they host their portion of the RMAC LSC Challenge. Yeah. Tell you more about that as we go along. Yeah, we're going to have some good basketball here at the First United Bank Center several times. Western State, Western Colorado is going to be down here. Here's Booker backing in on Cisco. Little jumper short. Cisco gets the rebound. Good idea, just couldn't finish. Salzburg brings the Wildcats back. Harris out to Cisco on the wing. Shot clock at 10. Harris drives. Wise rejects him. Ball loose. Brown comes up with it. Active defense for the Buffaloes. Blankly an open three. It's short. Wise with the offensive rebound to Tucson. For three, it rims out as well. Buffs had two good looks there and couldn't get the ball down. At the other end, shot put up. Mason for three, and he drills it. Cuts the Buffs lead to six. Good start for Damon. Brown on the near wing. Guarded by Mason. Little step back. No. 
Ball loose in the lane. Wise gets it to Booker for the slam. Nine points for Kavon. Credit Larry Wise for keeping that ball alive. It easily could have been a Damon defensive rebound, and Wise knocked it away and found Kavon under the bucket. Eight-point lead for the Buffaloes just underway here in the second half. Kyle Harris gets around blankly, stops, puts a shot up no good. Cisco with the rebound and put back. Tom Brown puzzled. He thought there was a travel. Well, when before the shot was put up, Cisco had a great rebound and put back. It was a slide stop. There you go. Here's Tucson. Thought about it. Steps inside the arc. A little short. Fasiero with the rebound. Houston, Texas native. His parents moved just outside of Toronto just prior to him entering high school. That was a big change. Houston to yeah. <laughs> Canada. Ontario, a beautiful, beautiful province. Here's Cisco went up. The ball was knocked away by Tucson. Out of bounds, last touch by Andrew Cisco. Case, basketball. Case of David and Goliath there. <laughs> and Zach wins. Hey, Andrew Cisco, meet the baby face assassin. <laughs> <laughs> Just pick the pocket. Where'd the ball go? Tucson family on site here in Canyon this weekend, but we hear there's still friends and family up in Johnsburg watching Buff basketball. Oh. Look at that, Julius Brown. Wow. Any of the fans in Westerville, Ohio, watching that young man yes, saying, sir we've seen him do that so many times. Westerville, a suburb of Columbus. I wonder if he grew up a Buckeyes fan. Here's a strong drive by Andrew Mason. Kicks it in the corner to Salzburg for a three. With, that's the answer right yeah, there. He has a great release. It's quick. It's like a papa shot. Six-point lead for the Buffs. Blankly to Booker. Booker loses the ball out of bounds. Yeah. Kevon took one too many dribbles. Cameron Bell returns to the floor for the Buffaloes, replacing Tucson. Addison Wallace is going to come on in place of Hayden Blankley. Addison with an outstanding first half, 11 points. He also had a rebound and an assist. Here's Cisco with the hook, and he got it. Good touch for the big man. 14 points for Can't, Cisco. He's only missed one shot. He's seven for yeah. eight. Well, he takes high percentage shots and makes them. Step back for Kavon. It won't go. No, that's not the shot they want. Buffs sluggish out of the gate here in the second half. As the Wildcats trail by four and have the basketball. 15-50 to play here in the first. Cisco on the wing. Oh, he'll take the three. Rims out, but flat foot rebound by Fasiero. Yeah, no Kicks it out. outside to Mason. Salzburg, he'll put it up. It's short. Julius Brown with the rebound. Buffs have numbers if they want to push. They elect not to. Cameron Bell, right wing with a three. Won't go. They've gone cold. And WT just five of 18 from beyond the arc today. Here's Harris for three. It's no good. Wallace had the rebound, couldn't hold on, and comes up with it. Buffs on the run. Wallace to the hole, puts it up. He tried to draw a foul. No whistle. Stripped away. Yeah, it was stripped away. Quick hands from Damon. Three-pointer from the corner. Andrew Mason knocks it down. Here come the Wildcats. They've cut it to one. 14.50 to play in the second. Buffs 43, Damon 42. It's going a little tangent there. Can't the official turns and tells the Damon bench, sit down. <laughs> don't like that rule. They're not coming out yeah. onto the floor not celebrating. Demonstrating. Yeah. Don't, don't like that. Here's Julius. Step back. Goes to Wallace. Drives yeah, in. It. Turn around. Missed it. Andrew Mason comes up with it. Cross court to Harris. His three, and the Wildcats wow. have the lead. What an impressive comeback. 11-0 run for the Damon Wildcats. And they lead by one. 
actually lead by two, 45-43. Bob Brown wants a timeout to talk about it. 14-11 to play. Check this out. Cross-court pass. Harris is over there. Bang. Just like that. 45-43. The visiting Damon Wildcats have the lead. You're watching the D2 CCA Tip-Off Classic, sponsored by Suddenlink. Joints begin to fail. It's more than an inconvenience. The relentless grinding pain slows you down and can even stop you from doing the things you enjoy in life. At Physician Surgical Hospitals, our skilled orthopedic experts are using advanced robotic surgeries to get you back to being you sooner with a less painful recovery. We're doing more than restoring joints. We're restoring lives. Seeing a, a couple of the students out there dressed up. One is fire and the other one is ice. That's been the start of the second half. Fire for Damon College and, and ice cold here for West Texas A&M. The Wildcats go on an 11-0 run over the last 242, and that sees a 45-43 lead for Damon, Kent. This is an incredible basketball game, just as we knew it was going to be. Buffs have the basketball in their court. Wallace drives in, whistle. That was a collision. Yes, it was. Two Fasiero going to be called with the uh, block. His first personal, team's first of the half. And are we going to have an official's review here, or did Tom Brown call a timeout? Damon Thomas. Well, there's. Now we got some moisture, that's it. Teams will go to their bench. And Fire, ice, and now perspiration. <laughs> you know, it's, it's going to be tough to get back into the regular week workday tomorrow. Having had three days of basketball and being in the arena Halloween. for three days and Halloween. And I won't say you know, we're not doing Halloween. We're just dressing up. But I'm getting reports from uh, the Madison Park area, the trick-or-treaters. Yeah. Evidently, uh, Coach Will Wagner's family was a big hit over there. And uh, – Congrats to the Buffs last night. Yeah, Big win team. down in Kingsville, and they made it home safely. And, of course, super congrats to Kendra Potts and her Lady Buff volleyball oh. team. They are on a tremendous hot roll right now. Twelve straight matches that the Lady Buff volleyball team has won. Kent, they have their biggest weekend coming up. Any Buff, uh, Buff Nation who can travel uh, next Friday, they're going to take on uh, Angelo State. And then on Saturday, they'll play Lubbock Christian. Those are two huge matches for West Texas A&M. And, of course, next Saturday, the Buffs with a huge football game as Midwestern State comes to Buffalo Stadium. That's right. 6 p.m. start. Next time the uh, Buffs will be in action on the hardwood is going to be November 12th, Friday night, 7.30. The Buffs take on Western Colorado in the RMAC LSC South Central Region Challenge. They'll face again that Sunday, so a Friday-Sunday swing for the Buffs here at the First United Bank Center. Buffs basketball trailing by two. Julius Brown, top of the key to Oweezy. He's going to put up a three. Look at that, brother! What, oh. what can this kid not do? Kent Johnson. Gives the Buffs the lead. Freshman not daunted by this. When they've needed some energy, you get number one in the game and good things happen. Wow. Here's Mason with the drive and Cisco with the tap once, twice. Expecting Tom Brown to question whether it was on the rim. Back and forth they go. Now Damon leads by one, 47-46. Tried to get it inside to Yeah, Wallace trying to find a Wheezy, and Kyle Harris stepped in front, got it. JB tried to 
pick it off, but they're just scrambling now. Look at that. Man, Andrew Mason notches his fourth three of the second half. He made that right in the corner in front of uh, some fans and then turned and said, yep, told you. Just like that. A little Larry Bird-like. 50-46. to 46. After the Buffs take the lead, Damon College comes back. Here's a wheezy. Strong rebound. Put back. Won't go. Well, just out of bounds. Addison Wallace. Yeah, all, all last of a sudden, touch it. Can't, just these shots are going in and out for West Texas A&M where they were going in in the first half. Yep. And so it is a – Still just a four-point lead, but Damon has a lot of momentum right now, and they're playing with a lot of confidence. And the Wildcats have the basketball. But there's a steal. Juju gets it, takes it in, misses, and we're going to have a foul. Yeah. It's going to be a push. From underneath. And let's see who they get. You take your pick. There's two players that make contact. Well, it's Mason. Yeah. It's Mason that makes the foul there. Yeah, Nick McDonald, 13. McDonald. They rang up. Okay. Yeah, His right. first, team second. Julius Brown. Juju at the line, shooting twice. First shot. No good. Got to make him. He's 66% from the line in the early portion of the season. Second shot also no good. Missed opportunities there. Two free throws. And a whistle. They get Cameron Bell with a foul. Playing too tight defense uh, against Salzburg. We've got a timeout on the floor. 12 minutes exactly remaining in the second half. Buffs trailing 50 to 46. You're watching the D2CCA Tip-Off Classic presented by Suddenlink. 80 years, the Lone Star Conference has been committed to excellence. What began in 1931 as a five-team conference has grown to 18 institutions spanning four states. And while membership has changed, the pursuit of athletic success and academic excellence has never wavered. 119 national championships, over 2,000 All-Americans, and nearly 300 academic All-Americans. Celebrating many years of success, this is the Lone Star Conference. WT student athletes drink low fat chocolate milk post workout because it helps replenish and restore muscles quickly to their peak potential. Scientific studies suggest that the immediate benefits of low fat chocolate milk include boosted performance, improved training, and higher recovery rates in athletes. Add low fat chocolate milk to your post workout routine. Go, look! Well, the story of the second half can be found in the field goal shooting, Lucas. Where'd the offense go, Kent? Damon College, 8 of 14 from the floor, 5 of 8 from 3. The Buffs, 3 of 14 from the floor, 2 of 5 from 3. Austin Shelley will check in. Let's see if they can get him going. He's a sharp shooter. We've got us a basketball game. Here's Bradley, kicks it out to McDonald, guarded by Shelley. McDonald puts it over. Cisco gets the rebound. Three buffs around him, and he gets it. Hayden Blankley reaches in from behind and gets called for the foul. A big man rebound there. First personal on Hayden. Team second. Oh, a moving screen, offensive foul, or a push off, but either way, it's a foul against Damon. They rung up Fasiero. Fasiero with his yeah, he, second. He came in and, and was trying to screen on a Weezy, you know. Just shoved a little bit. Buffs need a bucket. Not like you need more hairspray. <laughs> Wise, right side to Blankley. 
Wise, long three. Knock it down, Larry Wise. Six points, pulls the buffs within one. Six for Wise. Cameron Bell hounding Salzburg as he brought it up court. Here's Fasiero, goes up on Wise. Yeah. A lot of contact, but they're going to get Larry because he was sliding down the lane. Strong move by Fasiero. Off the dribble, see it here. Goes into the chest, draws the contact, and has two free throws. Damon, Damon College up by one. Short on the first. Yep. Let's see if Kevon Booker can ignite the offense a little bit. He's had three big dunks in this game. One shot. Second shot. Rolls out no good. Wise with the rebound. Cameron Bell on the wing. Up top to Blankley, left side to Shelley. Quick release. Oh! oh three. Got it! And are we going to have a foul? Oh, they're calling him for a flop. He'll get the bucket, though. Oh. That'll be a warning. It was a great shot. Yeah. He's over there. It's hard to tell there. I can't. I didn't see anything that warranted well, that you, you, big of an acting job. Yeah. <laughs> the youngster wanted to see. I mean, hey, gives the buffs the, the lead, 52-50. There, there are a lot of famous actors from Australia. <laughs> Hugh Jackman, Nicole Kidman. Here's Nick McDonald, drives the lane. Oh, twist and turns, and the ball won't fall, and Shelley gets the rebound. Yes. Freshman from Melbourne. There's a shot missed, but... Blankley underneath. From one Aussie. One Aussie to another. <laughs> yes. Put the shrimp on the barbie. The and just like that, the Buffs have a chance for a five-point lead. Joey Atkins called for the foul. That's his first. Blankley does it, and just like that, as you say, the Buffs up five after trailing by four. 8-0 run over 55 seconds. Damon College scoreless over the last 236. Let's see if the Wildcats have an answer. This has been an entertaining basketball game. They get it to the big guy. Gets the ball down low, and Shelley reaches in. He tries to come in and swipe at the ball. Yep. You're not going to just take it away from him. No. He's too strong. There's a running jumper and a tap Ooh, in. That ball was Bradley still on with the, the cylinder. Tap and it was up there, my friend. That was close to goaltending. Yes, it was. Tom Brown thinks so. Here's Cameron Bell. Oh, that was close to backcourt, too. <laughs> yes, it was. Settle down, guys. 55-52 buffs, 9.35 to play. Booker spins on Cisco, finds Wise in the paint. Here's Blankley for three, won't go. Buckle up. <laughs> this is only October. November is tomorrow. Yes. Nick McDonald working on the freshman. Gives it to the graduate, Cisco, and a charge! <laughs> Shelly took the charge. He took the charge. You betcha. The freshman from Melbourne. Man's up. Cisco picks up his third. They switch it. We've got a timeout on the floor. Nope, we're just substituting. Five in, five out for the Wildcats. They have actually pulled both Bradley and Cisco. They're going with a more athletic lineup trying to match yeah. up to the Buffs. A little breather for Cisco as well. If you can't beat him with the blunderbuss, then haul out the switchblade. 
Here's Wise in the paint, puts it off the glass and in the hole. Uh, on Halloween, a sweet kiss, a Hershey's kiss off the window. Back to a five-point lead at 57-52. Here's Fasciero, strong to the mm. hope, yes. Yeah, flex. And <laughs> Blankley's going to be guilty. Mm. You earned that one, Sean Fasciero. The, the Giannis flex at the end of that one. Look at this replay. This is a veteran player right here. Strong to the 10, absorbed the contact. You know, two weeks ago, Iowa State did a flex not even that bad in the end zone and had a touchdown called back. Oh, goodness. Yeah, I back to my what I was saying earlier. Let the kids have fun. There's some emotion in sports, yeah. and as long as you're not taunting over the line, let these young men and young ladies celebrate. It's hard to go out there and do what they're doing. Blankley on the wing, buffs up two, 57-55. Wise drives, puts it up, rolls around, oh! and falls in. Larry, the magician. Man, the intensity of these basketball games. We've got four more months to go. Here's a strong drive inside. Hemphill. Loses the ball. Great hustle by Kavon. Booker saved it to Brown, and here come the buffs. Wise, he'll pull up from three, can't get it to go, and we've got a foul outside, and oh. there's going to be a hold underneath. Shelly was trying to battle to get the rebound, and someone pushed off yeah, they against got, him. I think that's Justin Hemphill, number, or Justin Johnson, rather, gets his first personal. I thought this was going down. Yeah, just a little elbow yep. in the back of Austin Shelley. What great production from Shelley off the bench. Yes, yeah, what a spark. 7.45 to play, buffs up four, 59-55. You're watching the D2 CCA Tip-Off Classic on Sudden Link. Welcome to MetaDrive Pharmacy, Canyon's hometown pharmacy for over 32 years. We greet you by name, and our pharmacists take the time to counsel you and answer all your questions. Our HealthMart Pharmacy specializes in serving our community with fast, friendly, professional service and the highest quality medicines and health products. We accept most insurance plans, including Medicaid and Medicare, and we offer free in-town delivery to your home or business. Come visit us for all your health care needs. This is what a new heart valve looks like. This is what a bypassed artery looks like. And this is what a repaired aortic aneurysm looks like. The BSA Heart and Vascular Team is here to help you live life to the fullest. From our state-of-the-art cardiac technologies to our dedicated heart specialists, our goal is to help you take the very best care of your heart so you can enjoy everything else that matters to you. BSA for life. Okay, 59-55. We told you when we started this thing back on Friday, Kent, that there was some outstanding basketball teams in this D2 CCA tip-off classic. We also told you it was going to feel like March in late October. And it has. And the intensity of this ball game, it's just the third of the season. But two teams that you know are going to be in the region hunt and have a good chance at the Elite Eight again. Booker feeds Blankley on the block. Here's a three outside, won't go. Oh, man, Fasciero skies in there for the rebound. A foul. Against who? I didn't get the number. Oh. They issued a flop warning? Kent, the problem with that was that happened. That happened 10 well, seconds before the play ended. There was no need to, to whistle that. Well, I don't think that stopped play. The ball went out of bounds. Okay. They were just given the warning on the previous play. But that's Ryan Snyder. and He was the same one that called it on Austin Shelley. Fasciero in the paint misfires. Cisco gets the rebound. Oh. Two buffs on him. He's still free. Kick back. No good. Look Ooh. at that rebound by Blankley. He wanted that basketball. He did. Inside of seven to play. Buffs by four, and Shelley took steps. All right, that's a rare occurrence right there. Lucas Kinsey, Quincy Henderson up off the bench, disagreeing with a call. 
So they may have missed it then. Mr. Mello over there. Of course, the hand stayed in the pockets. but Let's see. Does he, does he drag his foot? I don't think so. Mm. He squares up to the basket. Intensity. Yeah. 55-59. Buffs lead it. 6.40 to play. Oh, feed to Cisco, but. Surprised he didn't go he, up. The Weezy cut him off. Here he is from about 15, and he drops it. Yeah, Cisco can hit that all day long. 18 points for the big man. Cuts the lead to two. 59-57. The Buffs can get Julius Brown going. He's been quiet of late. Larry Wise hit outside. He'll shoot three for this. No flop that time. I believe that's Kyle Harris. At whistle. Just his first. Team seventh, so it's one and one from here on in for WT, but Larry Wise is going to shoot three. Makes that first one. Wise with now 11 points to go along with his five rebounds and two assists today. And WT leading this game, KJ, they're only shooting 39% from the field. Got them all. And that bumps your lead up to five. So now Damon has gone cold offensively a little bit. Let's see if Cisco. Nope, they go to Fossiero, and he has fouled. Strong drive. He's going to the free throw line. Last time he went there, he missed both free throws. But he is so quick off the dribble. Look at this. Get it to him. Rips through, and draws the foul. Yep. Goes to the line, shooting twice. Sean passing you. The long pass shooter. Inside of six. As Fasiero makes them both. Three-point basketball game. One possession for either of these clubs. Cameron Bell at the point. Long three, no good. Missed by Wise. You know, Zach Toussaint <laughs> still sitting with three points. Julius almost had a steal in the backcourt, but no. And now the Wildcats have numbers, but Brown back down court. Ooh. That, that was the icky shuffle right there in front of us. That was a travel. One, two, three. <laughs> Speaking of the icky shuffle, Bengals had a bad loss today, Kent. They lost to the Jets, 34-31. Ooh. Ooh. We've got a timeout on the floor. 5.21 to play. Buffs lead it 62 59. It's a tight one right here at the D2 CCA Tip Off Classic, sponsored by Suddenlink. Choosing the right countertops for your kitchen can be tricky. Nowadays, there are hundreds of colors, patterns, and textures and materials that range from natural to engineering. Welcome back to the First United Bank Center. For our fans, maybe watching in Buffalo, this one here, I said Icky Shuffle before. This is the Texas two-step, all right, or three. One, two, three, four. <laughs> they missed that one. It's Damon basketball. It's a great game. These two teams have gone back and forth, 62-59. Buffs lead by three. See if the Wildcats have an answer. And who are they going to look to? Here's Salzburg outside. Brown all over him. Tries to drive, spin. 
He was tied up with Kavon Booker. It's going to be the Wildcats basketball. And is that shot clock correct the, right now? It shows one second. I believe they'll get a 20 on this. Let's see. It's good help off the ball. Yeah. Because Fossiero made the spin move, and it was Kavon Booker that came over and tied him nope, up. Nope, it stays at one. There's the lob. Hits the side of the backboard. Cisco gets it and short arms it. Good defense by the Buffalo. It was. That was the right idea. They were going for a lob off the inbound, but the pass was off the mark, and it hit, hit the backboard. So WT gets it back. Big screen from Kevon Booker in the backcourt to free open Julius Brown. Juju on the wing. Kicks outside to Wise. Here's Blankley. Tucson held to three points. Puts one up. Won't go. There's a tap by Blankley. Won't go. And Cisco with the rebound. And it stays a three-point ball game. Great effort from Hayden. That ball almost was tapped in. And there's Cisco's strength right there. <laughs> he about put Kavon over his back. Fasiero drives on Wise, puts it off the glass yeah. and in, and we got a one-point ball game. Great body control by Fasiero to adjust and then put a soft touch on that shot. Brown to the rack, off the glass. There's Booker with the follow. <laughs> follow me, follow me, follow me, follow me. Kevon Booker to the rim with a dunk. You know, Juju misses the layup, but it's almost like an assist off the glass yeah. with Kevon following. Look at that. Wow. That's why you box out, kids. 64-61-407. Let's take a timeout. You're watching the D2 CCA Tip-Off Classic, sponsored by Suddenlink. When joints begin to fail, it's more than an inconvenience. The relentless grinding pain slows you down and can even stop you from doing the things you enjoy in life. At Physician Surgical Hospitals, our skilled orthopedic experts are using advanced robotic surgeries to get you back to being you sooner with a less painful recovery. We're doing more than restoring joints. We're restoring lives. A smile is understood in any language. It represents joy, love, and shows you care. At Full Smile Dental, our mission is to build lifelong relationships one smile at a time by providing accessible, compassionate, quality care with the personal touch of friendship. Come see us at Full Smile Dental, located in Canyon, Amarillo, Dumas, and Dalhart, and ask us about our free Whitening for Life program. Welcome back to the First Shadow Bank Center. Buffs lead at 64-61 in a... As you would say on Halloween, a thriller. And Kent Kavon Booker has 11 points and five rebounds. Three of his five rebounds are offensive rebound, hang in the air, put back, slam a jammas. Oh, yeah. He's got the hop. Some pressure being applied in the backcourt here from Julius Brown. Harris brings the ball up court. Moves to Fasciero. Now they swing at the other side. Salzburg back to Mason. His three no oh, good. Oh, oh. Blankley gets the rebound and steps on the line. Just barely. That three-pointer put up for the Wildcats from Mason. He's made three of those today. Three for six. Harris looking to inbound. We've got a hold. They got Cameron Bell. Uh -huh. it was he was trying to control count. Fasiero. And watching uh, Fasiero walk around right now, Bell kind of got him where it is going to hold you up a little bit. <laughs> He'll have to collect himself. And Here, breathe deep and go to the line, son. You got shots. Larry Wise checks back in the lineup, replacing Bell. Buffs up by three, 64, 61, 349. Slight delay there while they let Sean Fasciero collect his breath. First shot, 
Got it. Has another one to come. Can make it a one-point game. One shot. Second shot, got it as well. Yeah, he has done a nice job. The last four free throws have all been good there. Addison Wallace brings the ball up. 11 points in the first half, has not scored in the second. He's taking it to the rack, puts it up, missed everything. Thought he had a foul. Didn't get a call. Here's Fasciero driving, contact with Booker, no call, and they call the walk. Travel, yeah. I, I think the reason why Wallace doesn't get that call on the other side, can't his body, he's gliding a little out of control where he ends up out of bounds instead of stopping and going. Go in, up. Yeah, go up and into, into the, the defender. Basket. Yep. Wallace will get a breather. Brown has only scored three points in the second half, so the Wildcats have done a good job on Juju. Here's Blankley. He's seen a lot of playing time today. Back to Wise. Shot clock at nine. Larry at the line. Spins inside off the glass. No. A little out of control when he got through there. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I think you go for the foul and you forget about the objective of getting the ball in the bucket. Inside of three as we approach two and a half. Buffs up, 64-63. The tempo has been the Wildcats' pace here in the second half. Back and to back there's a travels. walk. Yeah. Andrew Mason tried to stop his dribble but couldn't stop his feet. And the reason why that happens is because of the denial. WT denying the pass. Look at this. You stop yeah. and That's, there was uh, nowhere to go. Julius, Julius Brown. Defensive positioning. 2.21 to play, buffs by one. Oh, Brown's pass intercepted. It was deflected and intercepted by Brown. Yeah, and that's the right call. Yeah. It, it was a good defensive play by Damon, and then Julius came crashing in and did commit that foul. And a, he saw an open <clears throat> player, just couldn't get it through the Damon defender. Now let's uh, – See, we're, they're going to look now to see if he grabbed them and prevented yeah. prevented the breakaway. Like that foul. would be bad. I don't know that was the case. Let's see if we can see that one more time, Jacob. Thank you. There are the shots blocked. He's got it. Nah, it looks to me like they're both yeah, going he, for the ball he and just, he reached across yeah, he them. He comes through, and it was an obvious foul. Yeah. I just don't know if it – I mean, it's an intentional grab. That will be number eight against the Buffaloes. Damon Thomas and Ryan Snyder go over to the monitor. Buffs lead at 64-63. Their largest lead was nine. Damon College is led by five. Buffs have led the majority of this basketball game, but it's always been about three or five points. We, yeah. we knew this game was going to be like this. These teams played like this last March. And this is fun. It is fun. We're Starting to get nail-biting, though, and it, it's not the time of year you need to have nail-biting <laughs> basketball. Yeah, both fans uh, sitting on their hands a little bit anxious and we're just having fun up here Ken. oh this I mean, is great as um yeah it's been great basketball throughout the weekend i want to give a, a special shout out to all of our thunder vision crew the production team they've worked just as hard uh, as anybody else throughout uh, friday saturday and sunday and they've had a lot of fun with us as well your director for the last several games jacob johnson chris jaquis chance haugen and their crew we've had jamie abbott We've had also Jacob Griffin this weekend. And the officials are still huddled up discussing this one. I, again, not being 
I promise not being a WT yeah. home broadcaster, but to me that looked like definitely a foul against Julius, Julius. Brown. But he comes crashing in and, and out of frustration t- tries to take it away, but not in a way of preventing a fast break. Well, t- to me, where it gets into the flagrant foul is if Julius reaches out with two hands and and grabs Fasciero as he goes down court. And what I'm seeing is Julius reaching out, trying to bat the basketball sure. and swatting across Brown as, as part of the follow-through. But the officials are still in discussion, and the longer it goes, yeah. the less favorable it's going to be. Looking at the statistics right now, still a huge difference in field goal percentage, Kent. 47% shooting for Damon, 36% yeah. for the Buffs. And that's not just for the half, that's for the game. That's for the game. WT is one of their last 10 from the field. Yeah. And they're still ahead. Let's That's make a call. Damon D- Thomas, Darren Griffin, and Ryan Snyder from left to right there as you look down. Three excellent officials. This is a critical call in this basketball game. Damon Thomas goes to tell the Buffaloes bench. Ryan Snyder to explain to Mike McDonald what's going on. McDonald smiling. I think that's more out of sarcasm than anything. Tom Brown getting the uh, explanation now. He seems to be happy with it, so I think it's going to be a common foul. But we haven't received an announcement yet. Brad Stark, the public address announcer. We're still waiting. Again, it's 64-63, 2 minutes, 13 seconds left. Will be shot, and we have a flagrant foul whistle on the Wildcats against Damon Kent. Uh, so did that go against Fasciero, who now has two foul? Well, he had two anyway. We thought so. they were looking at something yeah. intentional or fra- flagrant against Julius Brown, and it wasn't. It wasn't. It went against. But Fasciero at the line shooting twice, and he misses the first. Now we'll go the other way, and Zach Toussaint will shoot two for the buffs. That was just one and one. And that's why he only shot one. That's why he shot once. It was one and one because the buffs have only committed eight fouls. Now Toussaint goes the other way to shoot the flagrant. Nope, they're going to put Julius Brown there. Okay. Because the flagrant, I guess, was committed against him. They should get the players to back up a little bit. Yeah, get them across. Across the line. Julius missed his previous two. Can't get it to go. He's got another one. Yep. Hang in there. And then I believe the Wildcats will get possession. Both teams missing prime opportunities here. There he knocked it down. Okay. No, it'll be WT basketball because of the flagrant call. WT ball. There you go. Yeah. Okay. You got it. All right, so get it in, run some clock, and make a bucket. After all of that, Julius Brown gets one free throw. Damon misses their chance. The Buffs came out on top here. <laughs> they were ready to inbound the ball, and the officials were not ready. Yeah, so we're not ready yet. They're, they're resetting the clock. It should be a 30 on the, on the shot clock reset, not a 20. Okay. I think. Yep, we're going back to the monitor. 65-63 our score. We think there's 2.13 left in the game, and we're trying to figure out if it's 20 or 30 on the shot clock. <laughs> now, Two, that's what it is. They're giving 20, okay. so here we go. Brown outside. Goes on top at the free throw line. Blankley on the wing to Brown from 15. Block. Shot deflected by Fasciero, controlled by Cisco. What a defensive play by Fasciero. Trailing by two, the Wildcats have the basketball. Fasciero on the wing, screen from Cisco, drives the lane off the glass, no good. Wise with the rebound, buffs have numbers. Wise brings it down, down the paint, off the glass, and in the hole. Larry Wise. Four point lead for the buffs, 67, 63, 130 to play. 
Here's Mason. Left side to Fasciero. Blankly all over Cisco. They get it to the big guy. Wise has him. Gives it back to Fasciero. Four-point buff lead. Shot clock at eight. Here's McDonald. Deflected. Buffs basketball. Stiff interior defense, yeah, Lucas. I mean, Coach McDonald thought there may have been some contact. The help defense definitely came over for WT. There's been contact all game long. <laughs> yeah, there has been. So now WT will slow things down. Julius Brown. 51 seconds to play. Buffs up four. Shot clock at 10. Brown is going to do it himself, it appears. Bumps into Cisco. He's not going that way. Here's Tucson. Buffs oh. aren't going to get a shot off. Yeah, Zach made that a second too late. The runner went off the backboard. But that was great defense by Damon. And really, you saw there, Kent, WT did not get any ball movement. It was uh, Julius holding it for most of the possession and at the last second handing it off to Zach. That was a tough possession. Buffs still lead four, 67-63, 35-7. Zach's shot went in. <laughs> it was just a little late there. That's the true running jumper right there. Buffs return to action at the First United Bank Center. Friday, November 12th, 7.30 p.m. in the South Central Regional Challenge. They'll face Western Colorado in a two-game set. Friday at 7.30 and then November 14th, Sunday afternoon at 1 p.m. The best tailgates start with the best beef. And the best beef starts with Market Street. Market Street, where we do beef the best. Welcome to Shimon Dental Group, where every day we're excited to see our patients and treat them like family. We are dedicated to providing you with the highest quality care in a friendly and comfortable Welcome back to the First United Bank Center. It's 67-63, West Texas A&M leading Damon, 37.1 seconds left. In the game, it'll be Damon College basketball. And Kent, a lot of times, so they don't have to go with a three, do they? No. You can still get multiple possessions out of this. The tempo that these teams play, and you can also foul. There are four good shooters on the floor. They could hit a three, though, for Damon right now. Here's Salzburg. He's got it. He's going to drive. He heard what you were saying. Missed it. Cisco with the tip. We got a push from behind. They got the big guy. Cisco. Mike McDonald doesn't like it. Andrew Cisco kind of waved it off. Damon Thomas with the call. He said Cisco pushed from behind going for that rebound. And that's number four on Cisco. But more importantly, the Buffs will shoot free throws with 26.6. Booker at the line shooting one and one. Okay, these are big free throws here for Kavon. Missed it. Well, here we go again. Just a few seconds less. Fasaro kicks it back out. Mm. Andrew Mason knocks down the three. How about five in the second half for that young man? Makes it a one-point game with 18.2 and a timeout. On the floor, we'll take it with them. You're watching the D2 CCA Tip-Off Classic on Sudden Lake. This is a walk-on athlete. They train long, put their heart into the game. This is the passion we're built on. It's why we put our heart into creating game day with the taste of Louisiana. Walk on. We live for this. Okay, it's a one-point game. 
West Texas A&M leads 67-66. The inbound coming. Larry Wise will throw it in. He's got to get it in. Calls a timeout, but we've got a whistle. Was it before or after the timeout? They're going to call Tucson the foul. The deck. Zach was trying to make a cut to get open and was pushed to the ground against Johnson. Yeah, that'll be his second. And Larry Wise was starting the motion for a timeout. He didn't mm. think he could get that ball in. Fortunately for West Texas, the whistle blew and Zach goes to the line. Okay, timeout situation. WT has one timeout remaining. Damon also has one. Ten fouls against the Wildcats, so two shots coming here for Tucson. Buffaloes have eight team fouls. Tucson with a lone three-pointer in the first half for his scoring. He had 20 last night. He's got four now. This next one's a big one. You're up by two. On the offense for defense substitutions here for yep. Damon College. Mike McDonald gets the hot shooter back in. Salzburg's Mason. in there. Nick McDonald's in there. Mason's in there. Facero, Faciero's in there. And you got to have the guy that's going to rebound. Mm -hmm. Cisco. Knocks them both down. Baby face assassin did it from the line right there. 17 to play. Buffs with pressure. Salzburg breaks it. Here's Cisco to Mason. Oh, my. Tucson got leveled with the screen. Fasciero with six, four, three, two. Fasciero's three-pointer short. The Buffaloes win. What a basketball game to be playing in October. The Buffaloes take a 69-66 victory over Damon College. That was a battle, Ken. In a game that you're going to see in the middle of March. And that was outstanding defense for West Texas a &M. I mean, running through screens, chasing people. Can we see the last 10 seconds? The screen that Cisco put on Tucson just leveled them. And that's the, the contest. I mean, yeah, that, that's that, the end. So that's as good of a shot as you yeah. can get for Damon, and that's where the Wildcats would like to have seen a, a better one than that. But, okay, we'll look at Let's it see again. See if we get here we go. Now watch Zach follow through. Wham! <laughs> oh, my. NFL Sunday night, right? <laughs> yeah. That's 15 yards out on the gridiron here. There's no call. Wow, what a basketball game. 69-66. Buffaloes win it to go. 3-0 on the season. They now get to prep for a week and a half before Western Colorado comes to town. We're going to take a timeout, come back, and do a quick wrap. You're watching West Texas A&M Basketball and the D2 CCA Tip-Off Classic, sponsored by Suddenlink. Joints begin to fail. It's more than an inconvenience. The relentless grinding pain slows you down and can even stop you from doing the things you enjoy in life. At Physician Surgical Hospitals, our skilled orthopedic experts are using advanced robotic surgeries to get you back to being you sooner with a less painful recovery. We're doing more than restoring joints. We're restoring lives. Okay. 90 years, the Lone Star Conference has been committed to excellence. What began in 1931 as a five-team conference has grown to 18 institutions spanning four states. And while membership has changed, the pursuit of athletic success and academic excellence has never wavered. 119 national championships, over 2,000 All-Americans, and nearly 300 academic All-Americans. Celebrating 90 years of success, this is the Lone Star Conference. 
WT student athletes drink low-fat chocolate milk post-workout because it helps replenish and restore muscles quickly to their peak potential. Scientific studies suggest that the immediate benefits of low-fat chocolate milk include boosted performance, improved training, and higher recovery rates in athletes. Add low-fat chocolate milk to your post-workout routine. Go Wolves! Welcome to Metadrive Pharmacy, Canyon's hometown pharmacy for over 32 years. We greet you by name, and our pharmacists take the time to counsel you and answer all your questions. Our HealthMart Pharmacy specializes in serving our community with fast, friendly, professional service and the highest quality medicines and health products. We accept most insurance plans, including Medicaid and Medicare, and we offer free in-town delivery to your home or business. Come visit us for all your health care needs. This is what a new heart valve looks like. This is what a bypassed artery looks like. And this is what a repaired aortic aneurysm looks like. The BSA Heart and Vascular Team is here to help you live life to the fullest. From our state-of-the-art cardiac technologies to our dedicated heart specialists, our goal is to help you take the very best care of your heart so you can enjoy everything else that matters to you. BSA for life. Choosing the right countertops for your kitchen can be tricky. Nowadays, there are hundreds of colors, patterns, and textures in materials that range from natural to engineered stone. Marble Depot is here for you throughout every step of the process. And yes, we do have a lot of options that might make that decision a little harder, but we're also going to ask the right questions so that you get the most out of your investment. So come by our showroom and let us help create what you've been dreaming of. Welcome back to the First United Bank Center. No, my friends, it's not March 15th. Oh. It's October 31st. Happy Halloween, everyone. And what a basketball game we just saw between Damon College and West Texas A&M. The Buffs win it to go 3-0 and on the new season. You see the final stats there, every bit as close as what the score was. Damon College from the field, 45%, 24-53. The Buffaloes, 36%. 26 of 72. Damon College knocked down 8 of 23 three-pointers. The Buffs 8 of 27. Damon College had 10 of 14 from the line. The Buffs 9 of 14 from the line, but rebounds. The Buffs out-rebound the Wildcats 40 to 37. At the half, it was a 24-13 margin, so Damon College really came on in the second half, but of those 40, 18 were offensive and resulted in 17 second-chance points for the Buffs. The Buffs forced 18 Damon College turnovers, 11 of which came in the second half. Yeah, Kent, that was such a fun uh, game you know, for West Texas A&M. They're still undefeated. They're 3-0. and Talk about trick-or-treat. It was all treat for us today. I mean, this was a lot of fun. I want to mention, too, uh, congratulations on the D2CCA Tip-Off Classic All-Tournament team, the selections. For West Texas A&M, three players named Julius Brown, Zach Toussaint, and Larry Wise. Your MVP for the weekend is Juju, Julius Brown. So congratulations there. Other players announced for Damon College, Sean Fasiero, and also the big man, Andrew Sisco, who was very good tonight against WT. For uh, Minnesota State Moorhead, three players named Jacob Beninga, also Lorenzo McGee, and Bryce Ersfeld. And then for Colorado Mesa, Mac Reniker, we uh, enjoyed watching yeah. that young man play, and also uh, Owen Kuntz as well. Congratulations to all those players and all those teams, and good luck to those teams this season. Recap our final day's events today. We started off with Drury and Central Missouri. It was a three-point game, 84-81. Drury's Panthers come out on top. Then we went to the men's side, MSU Moorhead. Garnered their first win of the season, 81-71 over Colorado Mesa. The Lady Buffs come back this afternoon and take an 81-68 victory over Southwestern Oklahoma State, a regional finalist from last year. 
and then the nightcap we just had, and what a game it was. West Texas A&M taking a three-point win over Damon, 69-66. to Well, that's going to wrap it up for our coverage of the D2 Collegiate Commissioners Association Tip-Off Classic. Couldn't have done it without, first, my broadcast partner, David Hasselhoff, <laughs> also known as Lucas Kinsey, our Thunder Vision team, our director, Jacob Johnson, camera operators, Jacob Kalunga, Kaysen Johnson, Emma McReynolds, Peyton Stokes, Cheyenne Jonas, and John Erickson. Special recognition to Chris Jacquis and Chance Haugen. This is a student-run crew with staff leadership and they're tremendous, Ken. They are absolutely tremendous. Their, uh, their technical expertise, their creativity, and their professionalism is second to none. I'll say the same thing for you, Lucas, although sometimes I think I wonder what, what, what you get what, me yeah, into what did this here. What get me into? 